folks, I'm Tom Vessel. Welcome to Best of Designers series. And today we're taking a look at D. Brad Talton. Now, there are some designers, when I talk about them, that they are kind of tied together to a single company. And that's, for the most part, the case here with D. Brad Talton. And most of his games have come from his own company, Level 99 Games, although that's not completely the case. Uh, he is a fan of card play, for sure, and a fan of theme. And he's one of those designers that if you like one of his games, you will probably like others. And if you hate his games, there's a chance you won't like the rest of them. There is one notable exception on the list, and I'll talk about it when we get to that. Um, I do like his stuff, though. I don't always like everything. He definitely is the kind of person who will design a game and then go, can we design 800 expansions and extra cards for this? I think we can. But you don't need all that extra stuff, so you can kind of ignore it. But there's a lot of thought in there. He's obviously a big fan of video games. That kind of comes into this. And so Level 99 Games showed up a few years ago on the scene, and they're still doing well. So here we go. My favorite games from Mr. Brad Talton. Number 10 is Exceed. Now, Exceed is actually a very good two-player fighting game. Exceed is kind of what they're... It's a kind of their way of, of buffing up in this game. Uh, the fighters back and forth. The reason it's my number 10 is because I think there's another game that does it much better later on in the list. Um, but it still works really well. Slightly more complex, I think, than it needs to be with all the different keywords. But once you get everything going, there's some good. The, the different fighters in the game are very asymmetrical. And it's also a fairly low price, price point because you just get a couple fighters and, and go back and forth and then buy more as time goes by. Number nine is Master Plan. Now, Master Plan is part of a set of games. Uh, he kind of had his anthology of games, and a couple games in that anthology were so much more popular than the rest that they kind of were spun off into games you could buy by themselves and bigger things, and we'll get to a couple of those. Master Plan was, was not one of those games. This is more of a storytelling game, but it's uh, kind of a cooperative-ish where you're, 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 the master plan is, the, the bad guy is there, and you need to foil his master plan with all kinds of weird, unique items. And I think I like this one better than other storytelling games just because of how strange and unique and weird everything is. It just has a different feel to it. Number eight is Blades of Legend. This is one of the weirdest Social deduction games I know of, I think you have these, there's like two groups of people and one group is trying to win the game. They're all going up against each other. The other group is supporting those people, but you don't know who you're working for. Well, you know who you're working for, but not everyone else does. And you're also the only person who can attack other players. So you kind of have like a master and a servant and the servant, but you're not sure who went, who's who's whose servant, etc. So there's some kind of interesting things going back and forth. Slightly more convoluted probably than it needed to be. Slightly smaller than it needed to be, but a really interesting game, Blades of Legend. Number seven is Kill the Overlord. This is kind of a... It's a take that game done right, where you have different cards, playing the different cards, and your goal is to kill the overlord in this game, and just taking the different cards. But it, it this is one of his more streamlined games. This is one of the few games that his company didn't publish, and I think it's an excellent one. Number six is a very strange game. It's a speed game called Seven Card Slugfest. Now, many of his games in Seven Card Slug, Slugfest is one of them take place in the same universe. So you'll see the characters in Seven Card Slugfest in other games. In fact, almost every game on my list has these same characters in it. But Seven Card Slugfest, they're all in a bar, there's a fight about to begin, and you're playing cards down on different piles. And that's the punches and the defense that those characters have. And then you'll flip the piles over. Everyone's doing this crazily. You flip the piles over and see what happens. I love this concept. It's silly. The whole idea of playing cards down fast is one I think that doesn't appeal to a lot of people, but I... Don't mind in this game because the resolution is where I get a, a, a kick out of, oh, this punch happened here, this happened here, and I find it to be just a, a really humorous game to play and then watch as it pans out at the end. Uh, number, let's see, that was number six. Number five, it should have been seven, right? Number five is Disc Duelers, also in that same universe. Disc Duelers is a dexterity game. You know I like dexterity games. In this one, you have discs and you just get on the table and you all shoot at each other and there's fighting going on. But... As he does with everything, everyone has a special ability. Seven Card Slugfest said the same thing. Disc Duelers does also very similar. It takes these same characters that you see in all these games, these fighting characters, and they're all, uh, you know, shooting discs at each other and bouncing off things and, all, you know, trying to kill the other discs. But you have different powers that you can do, which kind of elevates it so that it's not quite the same as other dexterity games. 
Number four is the one game that does not take place in this universe that he made, and that's Noir. And this is also the one game that if you don't like the rest of his games, you still might like this one. It is at its core, it is a two-player deduction game. You can play other ways with more people and stuff. He's made many different versions of it, but just Noir, it is a bunch of characters on a table. One person knows who the criminal is. The other person's trying to find them. You're moving the cards around. Uh, some of the characters are dying and one person's trying to catch the other person. It is cat and mouse deduction. Great one-on-one -on -one two player game. I really enjoy this one a lot. That's Noir. Number three, back to the uh, crazy universe again, is Pixel Tactics. Now, Noir and Pixel Tactics were both little games in his first gaming anthology he did, but they both blew up. Noir was good enough to sell on its own, Pixel Tactics was good enough to sell on its own, and had Pixel Tactics 2, 3, 4, 5, plus a gazillion extra expansion packs. And I think they even made uh, Mega Man Pixel Tactics. This is a game that has pixelated characters, but what was unique about this game is you are making a grid of characters, three by three grid, that are fighting your opponent. And where you put the character in the grid is how they acted. So every card was four things. If it was in the front, if it was in the vanguard, if it was in the rear, if it was your leader, Okay, so they could that there was every card was a leader. Leader gave you this special ability which seemed overpowered, but everyone had one. And then you could play it as a special card. So actually, every card does five different things, and that's a really neat concept. You have uh, the same decks, and you but you each pick a very different leader, and then you. Uh, uh, play your cards in different ways. You're fighting each other. Game play is not very long. It is an excellent game. Pixel Tactics. Number two is Millennium Blades. When I first heard about Money and Blades, the concept kind of blew my mind. It is about collecting a collectible card game like Magic the Gathering. So Money and Blades, the game is Money and Blades. It's this very simple collectible card game type idea where you have cards fighting against the other person in a, in a row, in a column. But that's that, that game matters in this, but it's the there's a meta game around it where you are buying packs of cards and opening them up and seeing what cards you get, trading cards with other players. and. That's the neat concept of this, as you're trying to, as the game goes by, build your deck up, and then, then you have your deck, and then you play each other and stuff. Really great game, uh, Millennium Blades. And then my favorite game from Mr. Brad Talton is Battlecon. Love Battlecon. This is the game that I think exceed, I mentioned at number 10, it's just not as good as Battlecon. There's Battlecon War for Endines, Devastation of Endines. There's honestly too much Battlecon stuff, but Battlecon is probably still the definitive take the two-player Street Fighter Mortal Kombat type games and put them in a board game. You each have a character and you're fighting each other back and forth. You are taking two cards and putting them together, cycling through these different things. Everyone has the same half of cards. You know, your basic attacks plus your character special abilities. The character special abilities are so very different that you actually have to learn how to play each one. Some of them are very basic, some of them more complex. Some one guy comes with, you know, can make multiple versions of himself. Another one comes with a pet. Another one has zombies. Another one's just a big tank. Another one is only good at long distance and snipes the other person. There's so many different characters. They all play completely differently. It is a really good, solid game. Highly recommend it. Battlecon. These are great games. I tend to be on the group of people who like his games. I think his games are fun. I like the video game injection that, are, that he puts into his games. And even though I will often say there's too much for this game, I kind of at the same time am glad because I like having a lot of stuff to play with. Anyway, let me know what, you're his, what favorites of his, yours are in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil. This has been Designer's Best, Brad Talton, and you've been watching The Dice Star.